Freude daran, dass durch diese öffentliche Skandale Well, it's a story that's made headlines around the world. A massive leak of information on offshore tax havens, revealing millions of secret documents. Earlier this month, we showed you the length some of the super rich went to to keep that information secret. Now, meet the man who risked it all to make sure it got out. Our lead investigative reporter on this story, Frederick Zalak, brings us the journalists in pursuit of openness. In Australia, investigative journalist Gerard Ryle had worked his way up through newsrooms there over two decades. He had been working on stories involving offshore tax havens when one day a confidential source told him he'd receive a special package. I, I still remember the day it arrived. I mean, I, I just, I, I literally, there was the office manager there and I just, you know, I just hugged her and said thank you. You know, and I walked back to my office and pulled this this envelope open and there was a you know, hard drive inside and this old-fashioned thing <laughs> but I didn't know what it was the hard drive was filled with unorganized random emails financial documents and invoices involving people from around the world so much information he couldn't make sense of what he was seeing so I know that it's a potential gold mine but I don't actually know what I'm looking at. I'm not sure how valuable it is. And I know that we've got to, at that point, sit down and spend a lot of time researching and, and seeing who these, who these people are and, and what it is I have. From the bits and pieces he could see, Raoul could at least tell that the data was from offshore tax havens, firms in tiny countries that offer lockdown secrecy for those who want to hide their money. Beyond that, he couldn't figure it out because the leak was huge. It was 160 times bigger than the WikiLeaks cables. He needed help. I basically bribed the IT guy at the newspaper to help me, you know, with beer. And I would say, give him, you know, I need this. Can you install this on my computer? Let's have a look at this. And we try all these different things over a long period of time. I'm still only seeing a small fraction of what's in there. Ryle started looking for a way to devote his work to uncovering the story of the leak. A job opportunity came up in Washington, D.C. He'd have access to the resources he'd need to crack the data, but he and his wife would have to leave their work, their friends, the whole life they had built in Australia. It was a huge leap of faith. You know, it was basically, you know, the chance to, to make a difference as a reporter, to tackle a big story. Sure, I'd had big stories in the past, but I really thought this was something that was worth doing and I wanted to take the chance. Heading into his new job as head of the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, Raoul brought with him his bag with the drive containing 2.5 million confidential documents about the offshore financial world. At ICIJ, he found a small team that helped him make the data readable and searchable. I can get Russia ready again. Once the team managed to extract lists of names by countries, journalist Marina Walker Guevara started reaching out to some of the consortium's members around the world. We could go to the Mexican reporter, we could go to Canada, we could go. Now we could offer something which was a list of names that didn't mean anything to us, but that. Uh, uh, could mean a lot to a local reporter, and it did. Sweden and Serbia. Setting up that team wasn't easy because many journalists approached were hesitant about the project. I showed um, the data to some, you know, very well-respected reporters in D.C., American reporters, and some of the reactions I got, you know, shocked me. I mean, they, they, they looked at it and they just thought, well, it's clearly stolen material, I don't want anything to do with it, or they'd say, I just don't know how to read this, this is going to take too long. In the end, the reporters came on board. The team coordinated with journalists in 46 countries, all different time zones, languages, and social and political environments. As the team pieced the details of the offshore world together, they uncovered politicians, businessmen, fraudsters, and even celebrities, and could see how the system worked from the inside. 
Then, after 15 months of investigation, for Ryle, it was the moment of truth. We spoke with him just before the leak went public. Well, my, my personal hope is that we'll be justified in doing what we're doing and that the public will, will agree that this is something that they wanted to, to know about. Mercredi 3 avril, ce soir, en manchette. The story started publishing and broadcasting around the world April 3rd at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. In a massive leak of inside information. Ob sie das Gesetz brachen, ist noch unklar. Um, we were all stressed and we went home that night and, um, and we started looking at Twitter. And, and for the very first time ever, we started seeing our uh, you know, organization popping up every few seconds. And it became kind of addictive. And it became a very late night for us because we were just watching it breaking. It was like about five in the morning. The traffic uh, from Europe was so huge now that the papers were out in Europe with the front pages, you know, with this story that our website had crashed. You know, we, I went to my email and there were like already hundreds of messages from all over the world. The leak sent shockwaves around the world. In Canada, CBC Radio-Canada revealed hundreds of Canadians were in the data, including lawyer Tony Merchant, husband of Senator Panna Merchant, who had stashed over $1.7 million in the Cook Islands. Offshore leaks made front page news. The UK, the US, Switzerland, China, Russia. It sparked official investigations in the Philippines, Greece and India and prompted the French president to call for an eradication of tax havens. Parce que les paradis fiscaux doivent être éradiqués en Europe et dans le monde. The reaction from the government, I think, that, that really made it for me. Probably the biggest reaction was from the French president who came out and said, let's get rid of all tax havens. Let's, and he set up a, a judicial uh, unit, I think, to look at it, to stamp out corruption. Um, but it was the broader message that I gave that this couldn't go along, you know, on any longer. Ralph's challenging journey and relentless efforts paid off with the help of dedicated journalists around the world. Well, we're being overwhelmed by the reaction. I mean, we weren't quite expecting it to be, to be this big. But it is what you hope as a journalist. But, um, and also you think you've picked a very good topic. Um, this is a hot-button issue for people. People don't like the idea of others. Um, paying less tax than them. They're like e equity and fairness. So I think it's resonated with, with the average person. Ryle, the ICIJ and its media partners plan to keep peeling away those layers of secrecy by publishing more stories in the coming year. Some of the biggest secrets from the hard drive in his small bag have yet to be revealed. For CBC News, I'm Frédéric Zalak in Washington.